Yeah, good morning. Is the sound good? Is it okay? Can you hear me? Because I cannot speak so loud because I, my throat is too big. So. Yeah, there's another mic. Okay. Okay, so today I will talk about uh, multi phase techniques, uh, it, which is basically cutting up your circuits in many slices, like bread. You cut it into slices and then use all those slices with different phases of the signal. And then you can do all, all kinds of tricks. And the first part will be about beam forming, and the other one part will be about the full duplex uh, transceivers. But the circuit techniques you will find out are, are kind of similar, but the application is totally different. Um, regarding this first part, uh, I will first give a, a short introduction on beam forming systems, like why are they useful and how, uh, how, how can we use them. Then I will give a very short yeah, tutorial style part of, about n pass filtering. It's, uh, it's, it's basically the same part as I published last year on this conference in the same talk here at the educational session, but it's only 20 minutes or, or less. So if you have been here last year, you may go, go to sleep then and I will wake you up when we're done. And then I will go to uh, beamforming techniques in CMOS. I will give you two recent examples and then end up with some conclusions. And then afterwards, we will do the full duplex. So, Beamforming is basically you take a lot of antennas and you apply phase shifts to each antenna and you sum up the signals and then you have one signal. And by doing this, you can kind of steer the beam of reception or transmission of your uh, transmitter or receiver. Um, it's in fact like the difference between a candle and a lighthouse. So a candle shines everywhere and a lighthouse shines at one point. So you can focus all the energy towards one point. You can do this in transmission, but you can also do this in receive mode. And in fact, this is another technique compared to frequency filtering. When you select a certain frequency here, you can select a certain angle. So if there are two, uh, two people in the room transmitting to me on the same frequency, I can still steer my beam to one of them and I can ignore the other beam. So this can be good if in the future there's so much uh, RF pollution that, that you have to direct to your beams even for, for yeah, low frequencies where it's not used today. And of course, if you take N receivers, you burn N times more power, so it's quite challenging to make a, a good design at low power and low cost. Um, so what happens is, like I said, the incoming waves arrive at uh, different phases, and basically the weights can be a phase change or an amplitude change. And especially if you want to make nulls in a transceiver, you want to reject a certain interferer, then you have to play also with, with gains. Um, if you look at the antenna pattern, you can see one on the lower left corner, there is, on the x-axis, is the angle of arrival, and of the, the i-axis, there's the uh, array factor, or the gain you have in that direction. And you can see there a typical main beam, which is here at zero degrees. There's a no, their signals are really rejected there, and there are side lobes. So since you have, it, it's kind of sampling effect what you do within spatially. So also you have always the side lobes, it just falls back. And this plot on the left side is known as the array factor. Um, so for the wanted signal, uh, the signal is fully correlated, uh, but the antenna noise of all those three or, or four or five beams, so you have many channels in this case, four, all the noise is uncorrelated. So this is interesting if you sum it up then the wanted signals add up, while the unwanted signals are not correlated, so they add up correctly. So this means for every doubling of the number of antennas, so if you go from 4 to 8 or from 8 to 16, you improve your signal-to-noise ratio with uh, 3 dB. So if you just make it big, your signal-to-noise will get better, but of course you also burn more power because you need more hardware. Um, the aperture is in fact the size of the array. It's the, the number of elements times the spacing between the elements. And there's a trade-off there. So if you take a small spacing of the elements, you can make a, a really wide beam. You can imagine if you, if you make the spacing almost zero, like you put all the antennas really close to each other, it behaves like one antenna and it's completely round. So if you make more spacing, it just can't get more focused beams. Uh, but if you make it too big, uh, you things get aliasing and it becomes quite quite messy. So if you have too big spacing, you have many multiple main beams, and then 
you have what you have in the frequency domain, you have also in the spatial domain, this kind of aliasing. 